yes. I think the uh, Republican nominee is unfit uh, to serve as president. Uh, I said so last week, and uh, he keeps on proving it. The notion that he would attack uh, a Gold Star family that had made such extraordinary sacrifices on behalf of our country. Uh, the fact that he doesn't appear to have basic knowledge around uh, critical issues in Europe, in the Middle East, in Asia, um, means that he's woefully unprepared uh, to do this job. And this is not just my opinion. I think what's been interesting is the repeated denunciations of his statements by leading Republicans, including the Speaker of the House and the Senate Majority Leader and prominent Republicans like John McCain. And the question I think that they have to ask themselves is, if you are repeatedly having to say in very strong terms that what he has said is unacceptable, why are you still endorsing him? What does this say about your party that this is your standard bearer? This isn't a situation where you have an episodic gaffe. This is daily and weekly where they are distancing themselves from statements he's making. There has to be a point at which you say, this is not somebody I can support for President of the United States. Even if he purports to be a member of my party. And uh, yeah, the fact that that has not yet happened makes some of these denunciations ring hollow. I don't doubt their sincerity. I don't doubt that uh, they were outraged about some of the statements that Mr. Trump and his supporters made about the Khan family. But there has to come a point at which you say somebody who makes those kinds of statements doesn't have the judgment, the temperament, uh, the understanding to occupy the most powerful position in the world. Because a lot of people depend on the White House getting stuff right. And this is different than just having policy disagreements. I, I recognize that they all profoundly disagree with myself or Hillary Clinton on tax policy or on you know, certain elements of foreign policy. But you know, there have been Republican presidents with whom I disagreed with, but I didn't have a doubt that they could function as president. I think I was right and, and, and Mitt Romney and John McCain were wrong on certain policy issues, but I never thought that they couldn't do the job. And had they won, I would have been disappointed. But I would have said to all Americans, they are, this is our president, and uh, I know they're going to abide by certain norms and rules and uh, common sense will observe basic decency, will have enough knowledge about economic policy and foreign policy and our constitutional traditions and rule of law that our government will work. And then we'll compete four years from now to try to win an election. But that's not the situation here. 
And that's not my, just my opinion. That is the opinion of many prominent Republicans. There has to come a point at which you say, enough. And the alternative is that the entire party, the Republican Party, it effectively endorses and validates the positions that are being articulated by Mr. Trump. And as I said in my speech last week, I don't think that actually represents the views of a whole lot of Republicans out there. Tonight, Donald Trump, who never saw combat, never served in the military, now has a Purple Heart. You know, something very nice just happened to me. A man came up to me and he handed me his Purple Heart. But Trump then saying this. I said, man, that's like, that's like big stuff. I always wanted to get the Purple Heart. This was much easier. The moment now shining a spotlight on Trump's own military record. The Republican nominee once touting his time in military school, saying, quote, I always thought I was in the military, but Trump never made it to a battlefield during Vietnam, getting four college deferments and then a fifth one. I had a, a minor medical uh, deferment for feet for a, a bone spur of the foot, which was minor. Still today, a rare admission. I've, uh, I've regretted not serving in many ways. It comes as Trump is still tangling with the Muslim family of a fallen U.S. soldier. You have sacrificed nothing and no one. Trump hitting back at the Khan family, claiming he has sacrificed as well. I think I've made a lot of sacrifices. Uh, I work very, very hard. I've created thousands and thousands of jobs, tens of thousands of jobs, uh, built great structures. I've done... I've had, I've had tremendous success. Uh, I think those are sacrifices. A lot. Oh, sure, I think they're sacrifices. Today, Eric Trump asked if his father should apologize to the cons. I mean, I think he has by calling them a hero. You know, and in, in terms of the one question, whether you've made a sacrifice, I think my father has. Now, that's certainly not the ultimate sacrifice. The ultimate Eric sacrifice. Trump adding this. I, I think this is something that was honestly blowing hugely out of proportion. But it was Donald Trump who kept tweeting about the cons four days after their convention appearance. And today, no regrets. I don't regret anything. I said nice things about the sun, uh, and I feel that very strongly. Uh, but of course, I was hit very hard from the stage. And from that Iraqi war veteran who gave Trump his purple heart. Yeah, I mean, 100 percent, I'm behind him. I know other veterans that are behind him. But today, President Obama putting pressure on Republicans to denounce their nominee. If you are repeatedly having to say in very strong terms that what he has said is unacceptable, why are you still endorsing him? Also today, an unscripted moment on the trail. Trump interrupted by a crying baby. Don't worry about that baby. I love babies, though. I love babies. I hear that baby crying. I like I like it. The mom's running around like, don't worry about it, you know. But then, just one minute later, Actually, I was only kidding. You can get the baby out of here. That's all right. Don't worry. I, I think she really believed me that I love having a baby crying while I'm speaking. That's okay.